Well, hello, everyone. Um, our guest today is Sherry Baker. Raise your hand, Sherry. Say hello. Hello. Hi, Gary. For, Hi. The, for those of you who don't know Sherry, she's, the, uh, she's actually my personal spiritual mentor, but she's also the director of the Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in the English language. And um, a professional therapist, if you will, lots of people go to her for results and you know sessions and this kind of thing. And she brought up this question, which I'm going to respond to a little bit, but then she's going to take over from there. As she talked to other people who are entering into our advanced course, Optimal EFT, reading the book, The Unseen Therapist Book. And by the way, if you haven't read that book, there's a link to it right below in the essential right below this video in the essential links. But the question is, why do I have resistance to leaving behind EFT tapping to pursue optimal EFT? Well, a little, little background in there. For those who may not be familiar with EF, when I first brought EFT out to the public, it was in 1995. Um, it was gradually known as EFT tapping, that is we would take our fingertips and tap on various acupuncture meridian points. And that all developed into a process for which a lot of people got a lot of really, really good results and are still doing that today. It's a very useful um, uh, profession, professional process if you're using it well. All right. But now we come along with optimal EFT, which brings in the spiritual dimension. No longer do we need to tap. We're bringing in a higher power. We're bringing in the ultimate healer of love, not just human love, but spiritual love. And it, for those who are really into it, it has become more powerful, more efficient, more lots of things. And we'll discuss some of that here. But the question is, I'm used to EFT tapping. I get results. Uh, my clients are used to EFT tapping. They get results. And here's this new thing. Do I have to just throw all that away, the old stuff, and do the new stuff? No, you don't have to. We'll discuss that. We'll discuss that. There's a transition that goes on. I personally do only unseen therapists, only that, because I want to personally get all the value and learn as much of that as I can. And I don't want it, I don't want it uh, 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 invaded or influenced by anything else. That's why I do it. But I sit in a unique chair. People who come to me typically know where I'm coming from. I don't have to explain anything to them. And off we go. But Sherry, please comment. There are those. In fact, you yourself still do some tapping, do you not? I do. All right. Talk, talk about that. Well, uh, when I first talked to you about optimal EFT, I thought uh, I've been tapping for 15 years. <laughs> Why does Gary want to move me into something else? The tapping works so well. I'm familiar with it. We get results. It ain't broke. Gary, why are you trying to fix it? <laughs> that was my thought. Sure. And so I thought about it and I said, you know what? It was a higher power in my spiritual view and I've told you this before, I think the higher power inspired you to bring forth to the world gold standard EFT tapping. Unseen therapist, the higher power, could have gone to anybody really, but she came to you. She knew that you'd do it well, you'd be a good steward of it. And so it occurred to me, this same power is now coming to him and saying, let's move EFT to the next level. Let's do EFT in a more optimal way than you've been doing it. So you received it. You told me about it. And even with my natural resistance, as most people have, when you're confronted with something new to take place of something that's working really well, a natural resistance. So anyone feeling resistance, it's a natural resistance. But I knew I think spiritually that there's a power that's coming through you saying that there's a more optimal way to do this. So I thought, okay, let's give it a try. 
And of course, I knew I had to because I knew you'd be asking me if I had been trying it and I couldn't say no. <laughs> so I thought, all right, let's get in there. Let's do this thing. Almost immediately. I mean, there was a little transition, but almost immediately I felt like it's a much more, and I love the word elegant. It's a much more elegant way to do EFT. And I didn't realize it till I wasn't tapping, but tapping all of a sudden felt very clunky. I'll use that word. It was kind of clunky. And when I started to do optimal EFT, it almost felt like it was smoother, like unseen therapist was doing the heavy lifting instead of me. <laughs> and, and, and let me interject in here just for a moment. The way the EFT tapping was designed originally is that the therapist, whoever is doing the guiding through tapping, you know, would actually be the detective to try to find what the real result, what the real issues were, okay, what the real specific events were, what the real emotions were underneath all of this, you know, uh, and so it'd be asking questions and doing detective work and getting answers and, oh, well, let's go in this door and then let's go in this door and, and all of this, you know, and all of this was very useful. But when you talk about clunky, even though that can be very successful and has been for lots of people, it takes time. And now we're finding well, why go through all that if you can just ask unseen therapists directly what's going on here, get an answer, and proceed? <laughs> now, most people don't trust yet the unseen therapist. They don't trust that answer yet. It takes a while to do. So you've got to open this door, walk in it, move around a bit, trial and error. You know, we're conditioned one way. We're going to get some new think going on, part of my book, okay? New think going on. But once we do that, there's a, oh, 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 I see. And it, not only did we, did we take care of this issue, but that issue and that issue, which we didn't really put on the table, somehow or other seemed to have happened. I, I want to give you an example. I have to give you an example. Okay, This is not the kind of thing I've got to tell our listeners. It is not the kind of thing that we can guarantee for you that is not the kind of thing that it happens all the time. In one sense, it's sort of infrequent, but it did happen, okay? One of our members was working with her own, for herself, with unseen therapist, her own depression. And she was working, getting, making progress and all this. At no time did she ever involve her husband in this tapping process, or excuse me, unseen therapist process. At no time. What happened, though, was her husband had a, for 40 years, he had had a bit of an, an ever disintegrating problem with his feet. That is, the cushioning on the bottom of his feet was leaving. He had no cushioning left. And it hurt just to walk across the floor, big foot pain, etc. And so he just announced to her at one point, and there's no other there's no other possibility for relief here other than unseen therapist. Okay, he says my feet are fine. <laughs> Forty years of this, and it it spills over. Now we again, I'm not going to guarantee that to everybody. All this kind of thing happens, but it's the sort of thing that can happen and does happen if you are. are make yourself aware of it. I, I'm just pointing out unseen therapist now does starts to do things that are outside of your awareness. It takes you a while to, oh, okay. That, another benefit, if you will. All right. Anyway, I want to throw that in, Sherry. Keep going. Well, there's a lot of what you just said that happens when I started using Unseen Therapist. There was a lot of, oh, really? That happened? you're done with that already. I mean, th this was not stuff that I was used to with the EFT tapping. So yes. there's differences that occur that you kind of just get used to. And gee, now it would make sense that I go in this door and I'm hearing, no, don't go there, go here. Oh, that's a little different than what I'm used to. Yes. Okay, yes. let's do that. So you learn to kind of relax. Whereas, before, as the practitioner, I felt like I was perhaps more guiding 
what was happening than I do in an optimal EFT session where I'm just sort of going with the flow. She's guiding. I'm just following. <laughs> well, in, 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 in one sense, in a very real sense, with the unseen therapist, you are no longer the therapist. You are the therapist, unseen therapist assistant. To use your term, you're doing, she's doing the heavy lifting. You're not. You yes. are just there to help the client put as much on the table as possible. Yeah. Okay? So they hide less, forget less, don't want to look at things, and so on put more on the table for unseen therapists. But then it's a, it's, it's a different, it seems similar because we use aspects and specific events and tabletop and table legs and some other stuff that goes into the detective work part of it. Um, but when you let her, when you trust, and it takes a while to do that, when you trust that, then, then big doors open, big doors open. So yeah, go ahead, Sherry. Well, I found I was getting much more done in less time, it was going faster, it was done more thoroughly. As I often say, she seems to have longer arms than I do. I love that phrase. <laughs> talk, more, talk more about that. Well, it just seems like before with the tapping, we could resolve the anger. Okay, it's now zero, but it's almost like we got the heavy furniture taken out of the room. But there was debris maybe still in the corners of the room. Whereas unseen therapist, when she resolves something, she gets in there with those arms and she's clearing out literally everything, every little piece that maybe the tapping left behind just a little bit what I call emotional debris, the leftover. But when she clears out a room, she's scrubbing the walls. I mean, it's clean. It's done. And I've talked to people who say, you know, with the tapping, uh, I get the result, but I feel with optimal EFT, the result is there, but deeper. Yeah, I hear, I hear, I hear deeper a lot. I, there, there is one little wrinkle I want to put in this. Unseen therapist, yes, cleans house beautifully, but is limited by what we put on the table. So if the client still wants to not look at something, hide something, repress something, wants to hold on to something, unseen therapist will not, will not interfere with that until they are willing. That's why we do our reframing and we're a good assistant to unseen therapists and so on. Ah, oh, now we can take these things and put them on the table. We got to get in there and we still got to get in there and dig. But the purpose of the digging is to let that person understand they're holding on to something that is costing them and then allow that to go on top of the table with a willingness to let it go. Right. So those bits of debris, if you will, Unseen therapist doesn't clean out of the corners. She cleans out of the corners that which you're willing to let go of. How'd I do? Oh, great. As usual. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. She's, um, and some people may be disappointed. Well, why doesn't she just take that? Well, are you willing to let it go? Well, not entirely. Well, she loves you. She honors you. And if you want to keep it for a little while longer, she'll, she'll go along with that. Well, can't you make her do it anyway, even though <laughs> I'm stubborn and I can't figure out why I have this resistance? I, uh, no, we can't make her do anything. <laughs> no, see, the, the, the concept here is the client, as well as you and I, are much more powerful than we even remotely give ourselves credit for. And we can hide and stop anything we want. We are actually just as powerful as unseen therapists. We just don't realize it. Unseen therapist is part of us, part of us. And what we're really doing is just accessing that part of us, which is really able to do all of this. But to use an example, we will deal with 
uh, resentment. We deal with that a lot in our advanced course. So people's angry at so and so and for whatever they did once upon a time. And they're, you know, they're 10 when they think about this specific event, and that terrible thing they did and all of that. And, and we start using unseen therapists. And now it's a zero, it's a one, it's a, something small, it's not important anymore. Seemingly, we took care of all of it, but underneath all of that, no, we didn't. We got we got it way down to the awareness level. We got it down, but underneath all that is that so and so did it to me, <laughs> and I'm still going to hold on to some because I get some benefit out of beating them up in my head from time to time. This is a little perverse, but we do this kind of thing, and so until we are really willing to let go of that. It's going to stick. It's going to stay. And you're still going to beat that person up in your head, even though it costs you, okay? Even though it may develop into a disease someday and so on. As long as you're not willing to let it go, fine. But unseen therapists, the more we get into it, we'll start pointing these things out. Oh, look at that one. Look at that right there, okay? Are you willing to put that on the table? You know, look at that specific event. Well, what about, you know, Mr. So-and-so who did whatever to you in the workplace, you know, once upon a time and all, you know, these other issues start coming up. Are you willing to let go of them? So you and I as therapists and anybody who's good, good training here can now start to reframe and they can start to see this a little differently. <gasps> it is costing me. And what they were doing, they were just actually doing the best they could given their own background and beliefs and conditionings and and it begins something that we own rather than something we academically talk about, you know. So as all that occurs, it more and more goes on the table, then mm, that's when we get that's when we get thorough. And that's where good training comes into place. So longer arms, more on that? <laughs> well, uh yeah, longer arms, she's in general. Uh we're we're all very powerful, but she's she's got more wisdom than I do. So I like working with her. She's a great business partner mm -hmm. uh, for people that are resistant and need a little, maybe a little bit of a push. There's a lot of advantages to working with this power. Uh, she's better at identifying as we've talked about. Uh, she can identify the specific emotion event that would be most beneficial to work on. Whereas we may come up with a good one and we think it's good. And she's like, well, maybe let's hold that one. Let's look at this one first. Ah, how great. Thank you. Thank you for dropping that in. She's better yeah. at that than we are. She can get to the heart of things faster where we may be working on this and this and this and this and this and that. She's like, whoa, actually maybe this is really what, the issue is and not this over here and this over there. We could be doing that merry-go-round for a while, but she can zoom in a little more quickly. And maybe once we get that done, all the rest of it just kind of collapses. Um, she's good as, as I've said, she can get reach in deeper to clear something that we may not know we have, uh, and it's like, well, I don't know if you have it or not, but she would know, you know, like from real early on, she knows whether you took something in or not. Why don't we bring her in and ask if that's there? And if we don't need to know, maybe she'll clear it because you likely don't need what you were thinking at age two or something like that. She can do that. Whereas with the tapping, we almost had to identify it before we could then knock it out. This is a little easier. Well, along along those lines, it was just a couple of days ago, I was dealing with one of our members and was having an issue and so on. So I was trying to dig back into stuff that happened, you know, in her childhood. She was giving me specific events that were teenage years or when she was in her 30s or 40s, which are okay, but the further back you go, the more foundational they are. So I kept looking for something more foundational further back. And she kept saying, yeah, but I don't remember anything back there. Now, intuitively, unseen therapist is sort of nudging me. And I'm what I'm really hearing is there's nothing back there I really want to <laughs> put on the table. I don't want to go there is what I was hearing. Okay. Wasn't her words, but that's what I was 
unseen therapist was interpreting for me, if you will. So we got to start talking about it. And I finally got her back to something a little further back than where she was going. I think it was like age 11 or 12, which is okay, but it's not still as far back as you might want to go. And so we started dealing with it. And all of a sudden she said, nope. And now I remember one. This was back at age four. And boy, she had it. She had it in very clear detail. Uh, and we started, and that was very, very foundational. The issue with her mother and, and so on. Very, very foundational. Now, that's un to me, with my experience, that's unseen therapist working around with her, seeing her resistance to these things that happened once upon a time. Could not remember anything. All of a sudden, boop, here comes one in great detail. Could that happen with tapping? Uh, perhaps, but it's more likely with unseen therapists. Yes. Anyway. Did we remember it? Or did unseen therapists just whisper it in your ear? <laughs> yeah. And it will take a while for you to really get that if you're a newcomer listening in. But once you get that, you've got wisdom in your ear all day long. Right? Yes. And it's, it, it, it's a mouse ma whether really or not you want to listen to it. Okay. Hmm. And that's, actually, that is one of the ways to dis describe our advanced course is we're learning to listen to the unseen therapist who's always guiding anyway. We, <laughs> we, 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 get, we got it all turned off because the ego knows, knows what to do. Okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anything more, Sherry, on that? Uh, yes. Another, I'm, I'm giving reasons for people who feel resistant to let go of that resistance. Yeah. And this one I think is really kind of cool. When I first started using optimal EFT, I remember uh, whatever the issue was and there was anger and then there was resentment or uh, sadness or something. And I thought, okay, you know, we'll do the one round on the first emotion and then we'll come after the second one. And I heard unseen therapists very clearly say, put both of them in that basket. I, I'm taking both of them at the same time. And I went, Oh my gosh, the EFT police are going to come and arrest me. <laughs> I've got to put one of them out there at a time. And she's like, no, 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 Sherry, I, I can do this. <laughs> Do it. Put them both in there. And I thought, well, what the heck? If she's ordering me to do this, you know, who am I to say no? So I put them both in there knowing when we come out of the round, both will be gone because she told me they'd both be gone. We come out. I ask the client, where are you? Oh, I'm at zero on all of it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, well, of course you are because she said she was going to do both. <laughs> so. Well but the client doesn't always to the, to the client that's something that's woo woo until they get really 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 get into it and that's one of the reasons people resist using this with their clients because it's too woo woo for them or they're not religious enough or they don't have a spiritual thing or something like that you know uh and so I deal with the client where they are tap if you need to okay if that's really what they want what they want to do but there's a within our course is something called conversational EFT. It's a it's a way where you can bring in unseen therapist without formally announcing her. You know they want to tap. Okay, tap, tap, tap. But all the time you are mentally bringing in the unseen therapist to assist in this tapping round. And the the likelihood is you're going to get better and better tapping results as you've learned to learn to do that. Okay, uh, so that's that's a part of the the transition regimen that somebody might want to go through. Um, I can, I can see if, if somebody says they don't want to do tapping and they don't want to do anything, but therapy, which to them is talk therapy. Let's just talk these things through and yay. Well, you can do that. You can do that and still bring an unseen therapist. You do it by, as you're talking with the client, gear the, the conversation towards specific event. Well, when was the first time you ever experienced? Oh God, I was six years old. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. Um, who else was involved in that? Yeah. What was, 
Sounds to me like you'd be really angry. Was it? Were you angry or were you, you feel guilty or what? Oh no, no. See, you're talking about a specific event. You're getting them engaged in a specific event, and all the time you're bringing an unseen therapist on the specific event. Well, you know what? To tell me uh, 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 on zero to ten, how does that get you? Oh, god! I don't even like to think about it. Okay, well, I'll call that a ten. Afterwards, and, and now run that movie in your mind. Well, it's uh, not what it used to be. I, you really did something. You're a good talk therapist. <laughs> You know, anyway, I've given that as an example. There's all kinds of ways to transition from one from the familiar to the unfamiliar until the unfamiliar becomes familiar. Anyway, exactly, exactly. My well, my last little bit of uh, marketing, I guess, for the unseen therapist. If anyone's feeling resistant, still, uh, she can reframe better than any of us. <laughs> and we want to see things from her point of view. That's the beauty of this. If we're in anger, obviously we're seeing it through our lower fearful ego eyes instead of our higher self unseen therapist eyes. Because if we see things the way she sees them, then we'll be at peace. So if we're not at peace, obviously we're not seeing it the way she is. So who better to bring in to reframe to yeah. see it her way. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. there have been times, I mean, I can reframe pretty well, but there have been times where I do around and I get a reframe or the client does. And I'm like, Whoa, that wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was so perfect. I know that that was unseen therapist. And, uh, whether I get it or the client gets it, it's like I know there was a higher power that was in the middle of that. Yes, yeah. And again, that takes experience. It takes trust. It takes walking in the doors and looking around once you're in there. It takes new think, new think, which I have all over my free ebook and so on. So, Sherry, thank you so much. I think that's going to be very valuable to people listening in. I hope they take what they learned and and use it and so on. So until next time, everybody, um, we'll see you later.